I'm Christy Fontanilia of FAS Bookkeeping and Tax Services. And um, on this video, I will be discussing some of the things that a new shareholder of an S corporation should know. So on this video, I will be explaining um, the S corporation status tax implications, show you the operational features required of an S corporation, concept of a reasonable compensation to S corp shareholders, and um, S corp shareholder distributions tax implication. And finally, the tax implication of certain fringe benefits provided by an S corp to its shareholders. So what is or how do you qualify to become an S corporation? But first of all, um, let me just um, mention that when you uh, form your company as an LLC and you um, request to have an employer identification number, you apply for that. Um, there's like two defaults there. The first one is if you're a sole member LLC, then the default is you become a sole proprietor if you don't um, make any election. The second default is if there's two members of an LLC, then you default to become a partnership. So to become an S corporation, there has to be an election that needs to be done. Uh, but first of all, how do you, what are the qualifications to become an S corporation? So first is there should be 100 shareholders or less. Only individuals, certain trusts and estate may become a shareholders. Non-resident aliens are not allowed to be shareholders and there's only one kind of stock allowed for an S corporation. Now, how do you make that S election? So there's a form 2553 election by a small business corporation and all the shareholders must provide consent by signing on that form. Um, it has there's a timely election filing which is within two months and 15 days after the beginning of the effective year now if you're um, not able to file on time there's a late election relief with reasonable cost and that's rev proc 2013-30 so this is what the form 2553 looks like so you um, complete this form and if you're late on filing again there is that uh, late election filed pursuant to rev proc 2013-30 so you either file this form together with your current year form 1120S or attach a late file prior form 1120S or you can file it separately. Now, once the IRS have reviewed it and approved it, you should get a letter called CP261, which is uh, within 60 days of filing the form 2553, indicating that acceptance and the effective date. Now let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of an S Corp status. So the advantages are um, limited liability, separate liability, continuous life, employee status, no self-employment tax, no double taxation. And we'll go over in details on each of these advantages and disadvantages. So the disadvantages are professional fees. There's of course increased fees because this is a separate entity and there's separate requirements. Employee status, inadvertent termination, fringe benefits, and pass-through items. So the advantages, you have to walk, talk, and smell like an S corporation. So um, you have to follow certain rules when it comes to operating the S corporations like a separate entity altogether. So there should be like corporate formalities, um, the officers or directors meetings, and then the um, corporate records book. Uh, it is a standalone entity. So the business continues even after the death of a shareholder and you must not commingle your business and personal funds. A couple of other advantages here is the employee status. So active shareholders should collect or you can actually pay yourself a salary in an S corporation and that is a business deductible expense. So you get or you receive a W-2 from the business. There's no self-employment tax on pass-through income unlike that of a partnership or a sole proprietor. And there's no double taxation. So 
there is a reporting requirement. You have to file the S Corporation Federal Income Tax Return, but there is no tax assessed at the NPP level. Um, the shareholder of an S Corporation get a K-1, which is the equivalent of a W-2. Those K-1 will flow through the shareholder individual income tax return, and that's where they will report the income and tax there. So unlike the C Corporation, there's really no tax assessed at the entity level for an S Corporation. Now, what are the disadvantages? So there's increased costs uh, for bookkeeping, accounting, the tax preparation, there's any annual registration fees. The S Corporation must run payroll. So if you have employees or even you, the, the sole shareholder, and if you want to pay yourself a salary, then that has to go through the, the payroll process. And of course, if you have a payroll process, then you have to make sure that the wages are timely deposited. And of course, the payroll taxes with help from the employee salaries are reported and paid to the government entities. And there's also that inadvertent termination of an S election. So if you have more than one class of stock, which uh, can result when you have, for example, two shareholders and one is getting more uh, distribution and the percentage is inadvertently changed, then that can result to another class of stack and that would cause the termination of uh, S corporation can only have one class of stock. And then if you have any uh, or too many inappropriate shareholders like non-resident, then that would also inadvertently terminate the S election. Now, the, the other um, big thing on the S Corp election or status is on the fringe benefit. So the fringe benefits for more than 2% shareholders, those are mostly taxable and that's included on the W-2. And so again, that's an additional administrative burden. There's some reporting uh, needed on this. And then the other um, disadvantage is the shareholders must track the basis in entity. The basis is the shareholder initial investments and then additional paid in capital, earnings retained in the business, and that's also affected by the shareholders draw. I will discuss that later on in more detail. But one of the disadvantages is really closely tracking the basis, the shareholder basis in the S corporation as losses may be disallowed or suspended because the, the you can only deduct the losses on your individual income tax return to the extent of your uh, basis in the entity. So when you're starting a new S corporation normally, um, there's that additional uh, paid-in capital or loan from the shareholders. So the reality is an S corporation is thinly capitalized at the startup, right? When you form the company, normally the shareholder will put in additional money or they would see that more as a loan uh, to the business. So if you have that particular loan, then that has to be properly documented. You have like a, a promissory note between the the entity and the shareholder um, with all the different terms like the number of years it will be payable, the interest rate, and so on. So it has to be really covered by uh, or properly documented. Now, uh, this is just really like an overview of how you operate an, uh, through an S corporation status. So the record keeping is really very important because at the end of the day, you want to really manage the business and um, making sure that all those financial transactions are correctly recorded in your accounting system. You must have uh, a separate bank account for your business. You cannot commingle your business and personal account. Best practice is you have to have a separate bank account for your business. And then you need to establish an accounting system for your S corporation. So using an accounting software for that, like QuickBooks Online. Um, there's no shoebox accounting when it comes to an S corporation. Again, similar to the bank account, uh, you should also have a business credit card, making sure you're not commingling your business and personal account or transaction. 
and then of course uh, once you have this accounting system set up and you're updating your financial transactions on a monthly basis the best practice is to review your financial statements uh, monthly if not monthly at least quarterly so you know what's going on in your business now reasonable compensation is another um, key topic when it comes to um, an s corporation status so what is a reasonable compensation reasonable compensation is a similar pay uh, that you compensate yourself as a shareholder of the, the company. So that can be your role, your skill level, duties, and hours work. And then, of course, the character and financial condition of the company and salary history. So how do you determine your reasonable compensation? So uh, shareholder, of course, employee qualification, salaries paid in comparison to sales and net income. Salaries paid in comparison to distributions and retained earnings, general economic conditions. And then it has to be uh, documented. Avoid large cash or property distribution. Avoid loans to shareholders. So why is reasonable compensation very important? Well, for example, if you're paying yourself a salary of 5000 and then you're making an owner's draw of 20000 a month, that 5000 which is 60000 annual salary is that a reasonable compensation for what you do for the business because if um, you get audited by the irs they can look at your compensation and your distribution and they may um, do an assessment and say a certain portion of your shareholders draw is really should be a compensation to you and that can be assessed with payroll taxes. So that's why this is really very important, understanding this reasonable compensation and just making sure that you're, you're following this to um, a certain or to a large extent, of course, with those different uh, factors that's indicated here. Now, let's go to the stock basis and distribution. So just keep in mind that the, the basis, the main concept there is you cannot withdraw more than your investments and earnings retained in the business so that's like your your equity your initial uh, capital in the business and then whatever earnings that you did not withdraw that is really your basis and why is this very important it's important because um, as i said earlier you can only take a deduction or take losses as a deduction on your taxable income on your individual income tax return up to your basis. So if you have a basis of 10,000 and your losses in the business is 20,000, you can only take 10,000 as a deduction. The other 10,000 will be carried forward to the following year until you have enough basis where you can deduct those um, carry forward losses. So here, uh, these are the different items affecting your basis in the business. Distribution is tax-free to the extent of the shareholder basis in S corporation. So as uh, an example earlier, so for example, if you have uh, a basis in the business of 10,000 and you have a total distribution of 15,000, then uh, the the 10,000, which is the extent of your basis in the business, is non-taxable. But the 5,000 will be considered or subject to a capital gain because you have withdrawn more than your basis in the business. Uh, the losses also uh, would reduce your basis. So these are the different items that affect your basis in the business. So the losses will reduce your basis. The gain or loss on stock disposition will also affect your basis. And uh, keep in mind that the basis fluctuates on an annual basis. That's why we have to like monitor this on an annual basis when reporting it on your S corporation um, income tax return and also on your individual income tax return because uh, there's a lot of factors that happen during the year that affects the basis. So the profit will increase, losses will decrease it, uh, shareholders draw will decrease the basis, additional capital will increase the, 
the basis, so and so on and so forth. Increase to stack basis, those are the income. If you have additional paid in capital. Now the decreases, of course, the distribution. So if you start withdrawing money from the business, that is considered as a distribution or shareholders draw and that would reduce your basis in the business. Uh, losses also would uh, reduce your basis and the non-deductible expenses of an S corporation, like personal expenses, non-deductible expenses like entertainment, uh, charitable contribution uh, also would reduce. If you make a charitable contribution, that's really more a personal charitable contribution, but you paid it out of the business account, then that is that would reduce your basis in the business. So if you have losses in the business that is over your basis, then that losses is a disallowed deduction and will be suspended or carried forward until your basis is restored and where you can deduct those losses. The losses may show on the K-1, but it may not be deductible on the shareholder's return. There's a separate uh, shareholder basis worksheet that is included on the federal income tax return. And that's also, there's a separate form 7203 that's being used on the individual income tax return to track the basis of a shareholder. So again, the distributions uh, taken in excess of the basis are taxable as a capital gain. The commingling of funds, the uh, use of corporate funds to pay for personal expenses, that can also be reclassified as, as distributions and it's a, a reduction on the shareholder basis. Now, the other topic here is the fringe benefits. The, the S corporation status is not really uh, friendly for the fringe benefits, meaning there's uh, if, if you have fringe benefits that is availed by more than 2% shareholders, then that is a, a taxable uh, benefit. So normally, the, the health insurance, the, the shareholder medical insurance is considered as a taxable benefit for the 2% or more shareholders and should be reported on Form W-2 Box 1. It's not subject to the FICA or Medicare. If you follow the, the steps and the proper reporting of the self-employed health insurance, then that is uh, deductible on the shareholder individual return as an adjustment on the gross income. So to conclude here, the S Corporation owners need proper professional guidance and assistance because the electing to become an S corporation gets you into a different level of managing your business. It's it's like a separate entity that you have to manage with different rules and regulation compared to being a, a sole proprietor where you report your business income or loss on the Schedule C of your individual income tax return. So you need more like professional guidance and assistance if you decided to elect to become an S corporation. Owners must do everything they can to avoid common traps and pitfalls in managing an S corporation. So those are the things that I have discussed here, uh, like reasonable compensation, the monitoring of stock basis, the distributions over your basis and the fringe benefits. You must fully understand the proper way of running a business and as corporation owners must be up to date with a complex and ever-changing tax law. So again, this is Christy Fontanilia of FAS Bookkeeping and Tax Services. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.